What's up, glue dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. Tonight's craft is something I came up with while I was laying in bed. I literally had just gone in bed, was about to fall asleep, and this idea popped into my brain. I knew if I didn't get up right that second and get it done and put it together that it might get lost in the clutter that's floating around in here. So I jumped up, got it kind of haphazardly put together because I was going to be leaving for vacation, and I finally have gotten it put together the real way, the right way, and did a tutorial so I can show you how I made it. I got this inspiration from the background of somebody's shop with me at, I think it was Burlington Coat Factory, within their decor section, and absolutely loved it and knew it was something I needed to recreate and something that I wanted to be able to recreate for you guys, because I think you might really like it. It's a mirrored candle holder, a little bit more modern, um, gl modern glam, and you can glam it up more by adding the crystal as you'll see like I did or leaving the crystal off which all that's explained in my tutorial but anyway I would really love to hear from you guys if you like it better with without how you would change it up how you might modify it for your taste I get so many great ideas from you guys and it really inspires me to hear some of the comments that you have to say even ones that aren't the most favorable but I do love to hear them if you'd like to join our glue dot family we would absolutely love to have you you can do that by hitting the subscribe button right down below below here and there is a bell next to it that if you hit that bell will inform you every time I upload a new video. Also if you share these videos that really really helps my channel to grow. Also it's super exciting for me because I I can build and grow on it and then I feel really inspired and motivated to make more videos for you guys. So I think that's about everything. I think all that's left is the tutorial so let's get to it. <laughs> do this and show you guys. So these are the mirrors. I already took some of them apart. These are the frames we're going to be using the mirrors from. And I, I got to be real with you here. I have watched several crafters um, use these for projects and they use a whole bunch of them and they just oh so nicely seem to just peel them away from their their foundation here, their backing. And uh, I that's not as easy as they're making it seem. So I don't know if these crafters are just not showing you so that you feel like it's just a breeze or what, but I'm gonna show it to you real time. Now, I had one that came off really easily, but the other ones, I got, it, it was a struggle. So I'm gonna show you guys. So you're gonna take it all apart. So you just have this, and then you're gonna push on these pieces from the back, of course that one comes off easily because I'm recording, but they don't all come off that easily. I have some of them, I mean you can see I've got the backing stuck on them. I really struggled. So anyway, that one came off really nicely, but I want you guys to know that if you're struggling with them, um, don't, I mean, just go with it. I, I don't know what to tell you. They don't all come off. Of course, this one's coming off easily. I really thought I was going to show you one that I had to struggle on. Um, but it seems like these all came off pretty nicely. What I had to do on this one, I had my X-Acto knife handy. This one's just really being a pain. And you got to be super careful to not cut yourselves. But kind of slicing away, and I know you guys are cringing because this is so dangerous, but um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I don't know if it's just the frames that I got or if these crafters, like I said, are just not showing you the beastly part of some of the projects. But for the sake of, I want you guys to know what it takes to do these projects, so that's why I'm showing you this. So hopefully they'll all come off super easily for you. You need to remove the mirrors from four frames for this project. So I hope you guys have an easy time with it, and I hope they're all really easy ones. The project is worth it in the end, so stick with it. Don't get discouraged if some of them are really hard to get off, okay? Okay, so we're going to be making our mirrors into these square boxes. 
a set of four and I've tried multiple ways to try and find the easiest way for you guys so the easiest way that I have found is for the initial side of the to start your box you don't want them overlapping what you want is you want the corners to actually meet so this is what we're working on getting so you're gonna have these corners meet but not overlap and create your 90 degree angle and then you're gonna take your glue and run a nice thick line of glue in there and let that hold your pieces together you're gonna let that cool off and once that gets cool enough to stand up we'll be attaching the next piece so I've got this piece standing up now. It's cool enough that the glue's not gonna drip down. And then you're gonna take your next piece, line it up, again, the same way you lined up the other ones, but this time, instead of picking it up, we're gonna put a big bead of glue, like a lot of glue in that corner so that it will drip down and fill in that gap. And then that way, you can make sure that everything is lined up while it's standing up and using your table for a little bit of assistance. Then as soon as that cools, it's right now, It's I put the glue at the top and it's dripping and working its way down and to fill in that corner. As soon as it cools enough, I'll flip over the, or I'll actually be able to lift the piece up and then I can fill in that other section and put extra glue for support for that. Okay, now that it's cool enough to pick up, you can see that I only have the glue that dripped down and it's only dripped down partially, but now we're able to actually pick up and fill in that rest of the side there to support the other piece, the other, the other half of the piece, I should say. Be real generous with your glue because this is what's gonna support and hold your cube together. So you want to make sure there's enough in there because there's really nothing else in there that's going to be other than the glue that's holding this cube in a cube shape. Once that has cooled off, you're going to stand your piece up again and we're going to be putting our last section on. So this one's a bit trickier because you have to align it from both sides. You're going to align the one side first. Don't try and do both just get it in the general position and then again a really good glob of glue and really let that in fact even a couple of squirts in there just to really let that glue drip down and hopefully reach as far down as it can to hold most of that piece in line make some adjustments too just to make sure because once it's glued, it's glued. And kind of start now at this point, while that's starting to cool but hasn't fully cooled, to line up your other corners. I can't really turn it to show you because it's it needs to cool off still right now. But I put enough glue that I'm looking at the inside. It looks like it has reached almost the bottom at this point but we will be turning it over after it cools just to make sure that there's enough on every corner. So I'm going to go ahead and do this corner now and hopefully that's just dripping right down in the seam where I need it to. Okay so I'm flipping it over it's cool enough now and anywhere that I need I'm actually putting a bunch of extra glue just to make sure that it has some support. And we'll let that cool. In the meantime what we're going to do, we have these little square mirrors here and we're going to be using those as end caps to finish off and have our ends look nice and clean and finished. So prep your pieces, 
have two for each one, so you're going to need four of the <laughs> mirror squares. Now why I say prep your mirror squares is because I've noticed that when you purchase these, some are a little narrower and longer and some are actually a little more square. So try and find the most squared off pieces because those are going to be what will fit the best on the ends of your cubes. To glue the mirror squares on as end caps, I'm going to be using the E6000 and letting that dry because I feel like it has a little more, you have a little more control with it. You can, if you feel more comfortable using the glue gun, that's fine. I just feel like it's going to be easier for me to use my E6000 and then just let it sit on there and dry for a bit. So I'm putting it on the mirror itself, on the back of my little mirror square, and then I'm just going to place it on there and you're going to be doing this on the taller um, your taller mirror cubes, not your shorter ones. So you want to do it on the ends of your tall ones. Alright glue dots, now that the hard part is over we get to do the fun and the easy part. The hardest part about this is making these cubes and getting them to um, be square and so now what we're going to be doing is starting to assemble our piece and I have as those of you who have been following for a long time know I always clean my pieces whatever is going to be glued I clean with alcohol first and I'm going to be using the E6000 and my hot glue gun to attach these um, pieces together here so the first piece that's going to go on, we're going to be now using our candlestick and we're going to be gluing one of the long pieces on top and centering it. So it looks like it's only going to need glue on um, these side pieces and halfway across the other pieces there. So not on all of it. I'm going to use the E6000 on this surface which is going to have the most touching and then I'm just going to use a little bit of the hot glue just to hold things in place. Just a, a dab of hot glue to hold things in place so they don't slide around. Try and get this centered. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Well, now that we have this piece attached like that, the next thing we're going to do is put our side columns on and those are going to go right there, one on each side. With these, I'm going to be putting the glue directly onto the base of here because I don't want to have glue showing. So I think the easiest way is to go with the glue directly onto this cube piece. And I'm going to do, um, I think, three sides with the E6000 and one side with the hot glue. We're going to be putting this top piece on so we're making a giant rectangle. Last thing we're gonna do is right here in the center on the top we're gonna be gluing our tea light. Now would be the time to make sure you don't have any fingerprints or anything under there that might be showing through the tea light. and we're going to let this dry. Now for those of you that like a lot of bling and like things a little more sparkly and fancy, there is an option with this. I purchased these on Amazon and I'll leave the link below and they are the chandelier crystals. It, it's a little too long this way but if, if you leave one crystal and the teardrop at the bottom it's the perfect length to add into the center of our 
candle piece here. And I also feel like it really ties the crystal bottom part of this together, having the crystal in there. It, it just kind of finishes it off for me. If that's not what you like, don't add that piece on. It's all about making it your own. For those of you that do want to add that extra bling piece on there, I'm going to show you real quickly how to do that. Because we've put also the hot glue and the E6000, I'm able to turn the piece upside down so that we can work on this inside part, which is where we're going to be hanging the crystal from. Now, another YouTuber, uh, another amazing crafter, what she uses is these little beads that are the alphabet beads that you can purchase also from Dollar Tree and you take one of those beads and I'm actually you can spray paint it silver I'm actually just going to use some silver nail polish because I want it to dry quickly and I think it'll be a lot easier than going out right now and spray painting one single bead <laughs> So here's the little bead I'm, and what we're going to do is spray paint it or use nail polish, make it silver, and then we will be passing the crystal little jump ring through this hole and we'll be gluing this to the inside of our piece. So. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Then on this one side here that I did not paint, I'm going to be um, putting the glue and attaching it to the inside, inside center of my mirror. And remember, this is upside down, so when it goes right side up, this will be then dangling, but right now this is upside down. So if you like this project, give me a thumbs up. Also, let me know what you think about it. But more so importantly, I would really love to know, do me the favor, please, let me know your biggest crafting challenge in the comments. Um, I'm working on, I have a little plan in mind, and I would really like to know what your biggest crafting challenge is. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. And please, please, please share the love and share the video. Um, if you know someone who might like watching some of the DIYs that I do, it would be really awesome if you could share the video and it really does help out my channel, so it would be fabulous. Okay, let's get on and show you what this looks like all stylized.